Hello, I'm Sarah. This is Hardcover Hearts, and I am back. I went to London for a business trip, and while I was there, I did some shopping and met some people. So I thought I would share what I purchased and then uh, a couple other things that came uh, once I got back. So let's jump straight into it, shall we? So as I mentioned, I went to London for a business trip. Uh, I chose to stay kind of central, uh, right in Bloomsbury, because I kind of figured the way that my schedule was going to be, I was going to need to do part of my time going into the office in the afternoon, then rushing back to my hotel so that I could do morning meetings from San Francisco on, on this time zone. So kind of working into the night from, from my hotel room. But that left mornings uh, to be able to, if I, if I got my act together, I could get out early, hit a couple of the bookstores in the area, like Foils, um, London Review of Books, there's a Waterstones, there's um, a Scoobed is not very far, like a 15 minute walk. So I could hit some of those bookstores and many of them have cafes. So I could double dip get a little bite to eat, a uh, coffee, and then also do some book shopping, rush back to the hotel, uh, grab my, my colleague, and then head over to the office. And that's what I did. <laughs> uh, I took a photo while I was in foils one morning and posted it. And I received, uh, a, a, on Instagram, I received a message from the absolutely wonderful Katie Lumsden. And she said, Hey, I see you're in London. If you're still here over the weekend, uh, would you want to join us for a UK booktuber meetup? <laughs> Number one, I didn't even know that Katie knew who I was. Um, so that was a shock in and of itself. Second, to be invited. I, I just, I, was so honored and so happy. Uh, so of course I said, yes. Uh, but I had also wanted to see if I could sneak some time in to see Eric Carl Anderson while I was there, because I do really love book shopping with him and trying to get a little bit of time. Uh, and so I asked Katie if I, if it would be okay if I invited Eric and ironically, he was already invited. So it, it ended up being perfect. So I'll talk a little bit about that and I'll show some photos at the end because ironically, I didn't buy any uh, <laughs> any books on that meetup. We did a meetup in a bookstore crawl. And of the three stores that I went to, I didn't buy anything, which is not like me. And I think most of it was because I was just having so wonderful a, a time having conversations and meeting people and talk, you know, grabbing a book and talking about it. Have you read this? Have you read this? What did you think? Uh, that it didn't even dawn on me to go into book buying mode, you know, which is where I wanted like really think about what, what can I fit in my, in my bag? Um, how was I going to, you know, can I get this in the United States? Is the cover better here? You know, all of those like book shopping math that I have to do as an American in London. So all of these I bought before that, that, uh, event. Um, so Without further ado, let me show you what I got. Um, and this is in absolutely no order. So I saw this and I and I thought, oh, I I love the cover. I've been reading a, a lot of French literature. And so I thought I, I kind of have to have this. And this is Francois Mariac's Therese de Curro. And please let me know if I pronounce mispronounce that. And I actually binged and read this on the airplane. I, it was very good, very dark. Uh, we It's about a woman who is on trial for, for try, attempted murder of her husband, poisoning of her husband. And she gets off because he uh, claimed, he basically gave her a pass. He said that, oh no, he mistakenly took the wrong um, dosage or the wrong medicine. And, and it was his fault. She had nothing to do with it. And so therefore she was freed, but she's on the trip back to their home and she doesn't know what's waiting for her. Um, and it's that, that 
anxiousness and anticipation and fear, uh, and then what does happen. And so we get a bo- both a reflection of like why she did it, and then w- what the repercussions of that action were. It reminded me a little bit of, of two different uh, authors. One, Natalia Ginsburg, because I just read The Dry Heart. And The Dry Heart, in fact, it's right here. And it opens with her shooting her husband. And then we learn why that happened as we're, we go through the book. So it had those kinds of vibes. This is a very sparse book. It's very simply told. This is more lush. So this also reminded me a bit of Zola and um, Therese Requin, if anyone's read that, that novel of, you know, uh, heightened emotions. Uh, Natalia Ginsburg is very sparse with her emotions. Uh, she's very much a um, show don't tell, whereas this is a lot of, a lot of drama uh, involved, but really enjoyed it and very happy that I own a copy now. Another book that I bought that I finished on the airplane. Uh, I just was on a roll. I couldn't sleep, so why not? This is George Simenon's first of the Magre novels, Peter the Latvian. And I've been wanting to read um, George Simenon's Magre series because I have read George Simenon's uh, more of his noir and the noir set in the United States. Uh, And it's incredible. Uh, but I have not read any of his Magre. And uh, this was so fast paced. This is a race across Paris uh, looking for a, a man that has entered Paris that they know is dangerous. And they're, and when they go to the train to apprehend him, there's a murder. Uh, there's a dead body. And that dead body is meant to be uh, Peter. Uh, But Marie does not think that's the case. And it leads to all sorts of interesting things where he actually sees the man that he thinks is and talks to him. And it becomes a a cat and mouse game across Paris. Uh, I love Paris. And so the, the... all of the intricacies of all the places that he's going, all the people that he's um, talking to, to try to get a sense of who is this character and what is he doing and what kind of game is he playing? Uh, what kind of hustle is he playing right now? And where, when can Magre come in and actually arrest him uh, was fabulous really fast paced, very small novel, read again, read it on the airplane, loved it as my first introduction into, um, into the Magre series. Then here's another one that I read on the airplane. Uh, this is Milk Teeth. Uh, this is by Jessica Andrews. And I picked this up because I heard, people were talking about possibly this being on the women's prize list. It was not but it was also set in Barcelona. So I also love Barcelona and thought, oh yeah, let me, let me read something uh, in, set in Barcelona. And this was very interesting. This is about a young woman uh, who, f- who is really adrift. She has been living uh, kind of hand to mouth in, in this very difficult existence. She's not making a lot of money. She's not really sure what she wants to do with her life. She's at a crossroads and she meets somebody and falls deeply, deeply for this man only to have him move to Barcelona. Now he also is apparently in love with her and wants to see if they can try to find a way to, to, to keep the relationship going. And he invites her over and she is someone who already in her life feels adrift, uh, even in her own country. And that's only further exacerbated when she's uh, a guest of someone else in a country where she doesn't speak the language uh, and is kind of there at, at, his, at his behest, kind of um, an accoutrement to his, to his life. And she has to decide and think about what does she want out of life 
and how does she try to get it? Um, I related very much to this character. I, I liked the character, although she was very frustrating. And I liked the, uh, the reality of the romance here and how challenging it is to maintain a long distance relationship and how difficult it is when when uh, culture also clashes. Yeah, so th this was this was good. I really, really enjoyed reading it. And as you can see, I, I, I knocked out all three of these very quickly. No, so those are the ones I read. So I'm gonna go into ones I haven't read, so it'll be much faster now. Um, I've been interested in poetry lately. I think I've, I've made mention of that. And I have always wanted to read Audre Lorde. And so this is The Black Unicorn by Audre Lorde. And these are just poems. And I love these Penguin Modern Classic editions because I feel like I can just annotate in them. And, you know, they, they're not precious, but they're, they're nice. Um, and so I enjoy, I enjoy being able to feel like, okay, I'll, I'll get my pen and, and we'll just go to it with this, with this collection. So excited to start this. Then I saw this and I had to have it because I love Olivia Manning. Uh, the Balkan Trilogy and the Levant Trilogy, uh, Fortunes of War. I loved both of those uh, books very, very much or collections. Uh, and so very interested in reading more Olivia Manning. Uh, this is The Rainforest. And look at that cover. Is that not fantastic? Uh, let me read a little bit of the back of this. Married but obstinately set in their separate ways, Hugh and Christy Foster know nothing of Albustan, the far-flung island in the Indian Ocean. Too late, they discover how it sees with unrest and intrigue. Yet now, when they need each other, the sullen, muttering forest seems only to intensify their differences. Sounds fantastic. Then this is primarily a cover by, although I really loved her short story that she did. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I'll put a link to it below or um, in the description below the name of it. But this is Mary G Gaskill's, Gateskill's uh, Bad Behavior. And look at that cover. Just phenomenal. And this says, Mary Gateskill's Tales of Desire and Dislocation in 1980s New York caused a sensation with her frank, caustic portrayals of men and women's inner lives. As her characters have sex, try and fail to connect, play power games, and inflict myriad cruelties on each other, she skewers urban life with precision and candor. So that sounds phenomenal. Here's a tiny little book that I wanted to get uh, because I've not read anything from this author and I really should. This is Elizabeth Van Arnhem's Elizabeth and Her German Garden. And I thought this Penguin English Library edition, edition was beautiful. And it says, this witty and sharp portrayal of a woman finding liberation in her garden has delighted readers ever since it was published. Taking respite from her husband, Man of Wrath, her children and her stifling household, Elizabeth discovers that the path to joy lies in having a garden of one's own. This semi-autobiographical novel records each season over a year as she makes a wilderness her kingdom of heaven. Then I think I've made mention that I've been really enjoying John Le Carre's uh, series, his George Smiley series. I do love a series, don't I? Um, and this is the very famous, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. And I know this is going to be later on. I think this is, yes, this is a George Smiley book. It'll come later on in the series, but I thought I would pick it up uh, while I saw it. So grabbed it as I'm wont to do. Then saw this and thought, oh my God, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm planning a trip to New York City this uh, spring, late spring. And this had some stories of New York and the cover again, look at that. This is Maeve ben Brennan's uh, Long, The Long-Winded Lady. And that cover is fabulous. And it says, this is nonfiction. It says, in these delightful melancholic prose sketches, Maeve Brennan goes in pursuit of the ordinary, taking us on a tour of the cheap hotels, unassuming restaurants and crowded streets of New York City. Uh, Brennan presents herself as the long-winded lady, solitary wanderer and wry observer of the human comedy. Whether she's riding in the subway, failing to eat broccoli in a deserted restaurant, 
or watching lovers quarrel in Washington Square, Brennan manages to capture the unwavering spectacle of the metropolis with an uncanny precision that makes these slight essays at once hallucinatory and hyper real. That just sounds phenomenal. Then uh, Roz from Scala Dandeling about the books, uh, you'll hear her name mentioned again later, had recommended this to me. And so this was on my list to purchase while I was there. And this is Patrick Hamilton's Hangover Square. Now, I think I made mention in my best of backlisted books uh, video, a uh, link to that, it will be below, that The Slaves of Solitude was absolutely one of my most favorite books that I read last year. And I think Ms. Roach may be one of my favorite literary characters next to Harriet Vane now uh, because of that book and how brilliant it was. And she said that this was also fantastic. So I am quite excited to read Patrick Hamilton. Let me read a little bit of, from the back. London, 1939, and in the grimy pub lands of Earl's Court, George Harvey Bone is pursuing a helpless infatuation. Netta is cool, contemptuous, and hopelessly desirable to George. George is adrift in a drunken hell, except in his dead moments when something goes click in his head and he realizes without a doubt he must kill her. Oh, oh. Uh, in the darkly comic Hanover, Hangover Square, Patrick Hamilton brilliantly evokes a seedy, fog-bound world of saloon bars, lodging houses, and boozing philosophers, immortalizing the slang and conversational tone of a whole generation and capturing the premonitions of doom that pervade London life in the months before the war. You know that's a time period that I love. Then this was inspired by Nora of Pear Jelly. I've seen her make mention of this, and now that I'm reading short stories, I thought I needed this. This is a different sound. Stories by mid-century women writers selected by Lucy Scholes. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. And this says, these striking short stories from the 1940s and 50s depict women and men caught between the pull of personal desires and profound social change. From a remote peninsula in Cornwall to the ornate drawing rooms of the British Raj, domestic arrangements are rewritten, social customs are revoked, and new freedoms are embraced. Expertly chosen and introduced by writer and critic Lucy Scholes, this collection reacquaints readers with mesmerizing stories by acclaimed favorites such as Daphne du Maurier and Elizabeth Bowen and introduces lesser-known lesser gems from Frances Bellerby and Inez Holden. Suffused with tension and longing, this collection is a window into a remarkable era of writing. Sounds sublime. Then I got this uh, because of an interest I have in languages. Uh, this is Great Italian Stories, 10 Parallel Texts. Uh, and so this is uh, Italian on one side, English on the other. So I've kind of translated the same story. Uh, there you go. And this is edited by Jhumpa Lahire. I think if it hadn't been edited by her, I probably wouldn't have picked it up, but I trust her instincts and her judgment. This says... This new dual language edition of 10 stories selected from the Penguin Book of Italian Short Stories celebrates some of the very best 20th century literature from Italy. Each story appears in the original Italian alongside an expert English translation, providing unique cultural insights and literary inspiration for language learners. This collection includes works from beloved authors such as Italo Calvino, Natalia Ginsberg, and more. So sounds really good and helpful as I'm studying Italian. Then in anticipation of a trip that I'll be taking this summer that will have a stop in Amsterdam, I wanted to look for a book set in Holland for uh, when I went to Daunt Books. That was, I was looking for something from Holland and something from Dublin because I'll be going to Dublin as well. And this is Midnight Blue by Simone van der Vlug. And let me see if this is translated. Translated by Jenny Watson. And it just looks so pretty. So pretty. Uh, this is historical fiction. It says 1654, following the death of her young husband, Katharine Barnes Docher takes a job as a housekeeper in Amsterdam. The city is flourishing. And as she assists her mistress with painting lessons, she dreams of developing her own skill as an artist. But when the past catches up to her, Katrine must leave the city behind 
<clears throat> Katrine must leave behind the comfortable security of her new home for a smaller city of Delft. There she is introduced to Everett van Newland, owner of a pottery factory. Working together, they dream of replicating the prize blue and white porcelain arriving from the Far East. And Catelyn dreams of a life in which her secret stays safely buried. So I do love a good historical fiction as a lovely palate cleanser. So this sounds right up my alley. Then I saw this and uh, one of the few books that I did bring uh, to London was another from this, from this author. Uh, I read Uncle Paul by Celine, <clears throat> by Celia Framlin. I loved this cover. This was super creepy, very interesting, uh, dark uh, tale. I'll tell more about this in my uh, update, reading update. But I knew after reading this that I wanted to read more from this author. And voila, I found this, Hours Before Dawn. And this says, Welcome to the Nightmare That Never Ends. So that's pretty fun. And then this really great backing for this, for this cover. So this one says on the inner flap, uh, Louise is desperate for a good night's rest. <laughs> uh, forget the girls running errant in the garden and bothering the neighbors. Forget her husband who seems oblivious to it all. If the baby would stop screaming, everything would be fine. Or would it? What if Louise's growing fears about her fa the family's mysterious new lodger are real? What could she do and would anyone believe her? Is she dreaming or is this a nightmare? Maybe if she could just get some sleep, she'd be able to think straight. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a good, good uh, teaser right there. Then two more. <clears throat> I found these on my very last day. You know, I think I've made mention before that I love going a little bit early to uh, Heathrow so that I can look in the bookstore there and then also look in, uh, there's also, I think it's uh, like a convenience store, you know, kind of little bit of everything. And in the far back, they have some books. Uh, so that's where I found these. Uh, this is Allie Smith's Public Library and Other Stories. So a short story collection from Allie Smith, uh, who I really enjoyed her quartet, seasonal quartet, uh, and How to Be Both as well. So looking forward to reading these. And then lastly, I this is one that I think is set in Dublin. Yes, it is. And this was the winner of the Booker Prize. Uh, and this is Prophet Song by Paul Lynch. This is that horrible size and font, huge font that really drives me crazy, but I am so cheap. And so the buy one, get one half off, <laughs> it gets me every time. So although you may have heard of this, let me read the back as well. On a dark, wet evening in Dublin, scientist and mother of four, Eilish Stack answers her front door to find GNSB on her step. Two officers from Ireland's newly formed secret police are here to interrogate her husband, a trade unionist. Ireland is falling apart. The country is in the grip of the government turning toward tyranny. And when her husband disappears, Eilish finds herself caught within the nightmare logic of a society that is quickly unraveling. How far will she go to save her family? And what or who is she willing to leave behind? Exhilarating, terrifying, and propulsive, Prophet Song is a work of Brechtay breathtaking originality, offering a devastating vision of societal collapse and a deeply human portrayal of a mother's fight to hold her family together. Sounds great. So now that I've talked to you about the books, let me tell you about the meetup that I was lucky to, to be invited to. So first of all, it was going to be a full day um, from around 10 o'clock until into the evening uh, with a bunch of different locations, starting in Brick Lane in East London. And I, I was absolutely excited, but I also knew that I was only really going to spend a portion of the time there. One of the reasons is because I'm still masking. So that makes uh, eating inside uh, a little challenging, especially with a big group of people. And, uh, and I found out that they would be eating inside. And so uh, I would have needed to break away at that point and get some food anyway. Uh, and there were a few other people that were breaking away that had other commitments that afternoon. 
So I begged off and asked if it would be all right if I split away so that I could go to visit some museums. So if you know anything about me in this channel, you know that I love art. I love going to museums and there is, I, I was desperately in need of just some quiet time. And even though a, a museum is very boisterous and there's a lot of things going on, I, I'm just able to just like really kind of hone in and focus, especially if there are seats and I can sit down and just take it all in. So I kind of needed that time. Um, so I, I had a plan to leave, grab a bite to eat and head over to the National Gallery. Um, so let me tell you about some of the lovely people that I met. So we met up at Brick Lane at a cafe and Katie was there. Uh, absolute joy, so kind, so organized. And being someone who is also um, a project manager by by trade, I love a good agenda, a, a meetup, a well-organized meeting, all that kind of stuff. I love it. So she was the top notch. Um, the other people I met, and I'm reading off this list, uh, Oliver, Olivia, Gemma, Alice, um, Charlotte, Kirsten, Jennifer, Emily, and uh, Chatty, uh, Ben, and Bob. And I did uh, not really get a chance to talk to uh, Matt or Kirsten or uh, just a little bit with Charlotte. And Gareth and I kind of crossed paths at the very last uh, event before the last uh, bookshop before I had to peel off. And then uh, people that I was most, most excited to finally meet in person, uh, Charlie, uh, I was so excited to meet Charlie. And, uh, you know, Leo is is a huge fan of Charlie and asked that I give, give her a big hug from him. So that was the, one of the first things that I did. Uh, then Roz. So Roz and Tilly came and Roz, I have actually read with, and uh, I just find her so brilliant, so engaging, so warm and and smart. Uh, so I, I really had my fingers crossed that Roz was going to be there because I know that she's done, I think she's done this before. And uh, so when she walked in, <laughs> I had to really hold myself back from just running up to her. And then I thought, she doesn't probably know that you're even invited to this since it was last minute. So I kind of stayed back and waited and, and she kind of scanned and said hello to everyone. And then she kind of turned to me and Charlie was standing right next to me. And Charlie's like, Roz, it's Sarah. <laughs> and Roz, it goes, Sarah from what? What are you doing here? And it was um, the best reaction. It, it filled my heart. I was so, so happy. Um, and yeah, so that was just uh, sublime. Um, and then also to see Eric again, uh, it, it just made the day just phenomenal, phenomenal. So we chatted a little bit in the cafe and then we made it all, made a, the little jaunt over to Libreria, li, li, Libreria, Libreria. I, I always mispronounce it. So please correct me. Um, in the comments below if, uh, what the best way to pronounce that bookstore is. It's lovely. It's a little gem of a, of a store. We completely took over. I have a photo of us outside uh, that I'll put right here. It was so much fun just talking to everyone and just picking up a book and saying, oh, have you read this? What did you think? Uh, and kind of sharing ideas and thoughts. And what was most exciting is it's right before the Women's Prize was being announced. So everyone was was buzzing about what could be on the on the women's list and so many of them had done their predictions videos so I, I had opportunity to watch a bunch of the videos of people before going so i so at least i uh, was familiar with some of the people that i hadn't i didn't know um, once i got the list of everyone who was going to be attending so it was really interesting to talk to them a little bit further about which of the books uh, and why did they think that was going to be included um, yeah, it was such great fun. Then we walked from there to Brick Lane Bookstore, which is also a lovely little bookstore. And um, I felt very vindicated that Ross and I um, did not get on with some of the similar books. I won't say which ones they were, but she and I both were, as we were kind of talking uh, in front of this display, she and I both kind of gave a look like, 
and then just started laughing because we neither of us really really like these some books that other people really really did enjoy so that made me feel very vindicated in my in my judgment and then we walked uh, further up the street and uh, around the corner to a little indie uh, shop that that focuses primarily on uh, uh, queer literature uh, and uh, and it was absolutely gorgeous. They had a little cafe. You could tell people just come and hang out. It just had that community, lovely, lovely vibe. And that was the last bookshop before I peeled off. Uh, I actually ran back down Brick Lane because I thought, oh my God, I'm so close to an amazing curry. I can't, <laughs> I can't just get, get like leave this part of London and, and go to the other part and, and not have a curry. So I ran back and I got a samosa chat, which was fantastic, ate it outside and had a fantastic uh, chai and um, just reflected on what a, what a wonderful experience I had just had. So uh, for all those people that I didn't get a chance to talk to as much, uh, I'm so sorry. I wish I had more time. And, uh, and then to, to Katie and, and everyone, just thank you for in thinking of me, inviting me, and the warm welcome that you all gave me. It was uh, truly a delight. Okay, so this video has gone on a tremendously long time. Uh, I will end it here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.